in 2023, fellow content creator, friend of the channel, friend in real life, and just general good egg, Ms. Modeler, did French February, uh, a month of videos celebrating a country which is otherwise a bit underrepresented in terms of uh, the models and the appreciation, basically. You just... They're just underappreciated. Simple as that. Well, this year, French February is expanding. And no, I'm not going to be doing lots of just silly baguette references, dressing as a croissant or anything stupid like that. Uh, I thought I would join in by making a model of a French plane. The plane in question is this one. The Merker... 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 The Merker Meron... The... The... This thing. In this video, I will cover an unboxing, a very brief history on the aircraft, and a build video in standard style, so it will be a, a build analysis video. So rather than every piece glued to every piece, it will just be a general overview, and then we'll see the model as an end result. And maybe I'll even explain why my French aircraft is Finnish. So here we have the Morocco Moron, uh, Moran, uh, I don't know, I'm struggling because I'm trying to do this in a vaguely Finnish way and then can't go into the vaguely French way to do that. Uh, we'll call it the Bogeyman, aka the John Wick. Now I'm no Finn expert, but I'm pretty sure that there is along the lines of uh, World War II Finnish fighter. We have a fantastic artwork of the Bogeyman and what I assume is a is that a Lag Three or something along those lines. Um, I I admit my Soviet knowledge is not as good as it perhaps could be uh, by whoever signed it down there, and of course the brand and basic details here. We have other products available from RS Models on that side. And on this side we have an address and some general warning. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Make sure to read instructions listed below before assembling. Adult supervisors should also read instructions. Well, goddamn, I don't have an adult to supervise me. And colour callout is provided on the back. We have three options which are essentially uh, the same basic camouflage scheme except... Option one has yellow on it, and this one uh, does not. And the different markings, including the Second World War era swastika and the post Second World War era roundel. God, that's really hard. I, I didn't want to say that it's a Second World War swastika because, again, the Finnish didn't take part in Second World War. They just had their own little kerfuffles that just coincidentally happened at the same time. Interesting to note that the first option is for the plane flown by Lars Hatton with six victories. He got three of them in the Bogeyman. Uh, there was, at the time, only three available for service. He had a kill in each of them. So he had six victories. One of them would have been in this aircraft. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Everything is sealed in a typical Czech-style bag. I don't know why Czech companies always seem to just supply the plastic and everything thrown into a little foldable, sticky thingy bag, but hey, they all do. Um, looking at the instructions first, we have a little bit of history all about this type of um, MS-406 and derivatives. We have the sprue tree and a photo, <laughs> a very crudely scanned image of uh, presumably an extra sprue that this version has relative to the others little color call out droplet thing there so it doesn't give you any uh, numbers any particular brand it just says a is black b is gray blue c is silver etc etc and i'm not annoyed with that that's all right that's yeah well, i mean we'll see how easy they are to follow but it looks okay for now, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Uh, and then the back, so yeah, assembled in ten steps. Nothing to uh, to write home about. Nothing incredible, but yeah, that's close enough. That'll do. It's better than some. Anyway, oh, decals. I was going to say onto the plastic, but no, decals first. But they're in their own separate bag. I'm going to leave them in there. I don't know how good they're going to be. RS ones can be a bit flaky, but we'll see. Uh, I've got some spare finish markings anyway if I need them. So as long as the registration is okay, I can't see this being a problem. This one's black. Look, partly black. Uh, why, why is that? Okay, that one is for the one down there, 632, and it's got a black bit on it. Uh, that's interesting. In fact, there was something I was going to mention later, but we'll do it now. That, uh, I noticed this when I was looking at the box. So it says here the main colours are dark green, black green, light 
blue, grey and yellow. Uh, for those that are particularly interested, the light blue, grey is actually German RLM 76. That's, the uh, the, that's how they were supplied by the Germans to Finland. And dark green is clearly brown. I don't know why. And black green is very green. Again, I don't know why, because the black green looks more like the dark green, and the dark green doesn't look like anything at all. I've seen it listed that the camouflage was actually black rather than black green, and the presence of that decal would suggest that that is true. So, some confusion. I don't know which one is correct. I'll try and work it out before I go too far, but anyway, the decals look fine. We have a couple of resin wheels with an hole in the middle. So now you can have resin wheels on a stick. We have three clear parts in a small zip seal bag. I'm not going to take them out, even though I could just re reseal them. We'll just leave them in there. We'll see what they're like at the time. We have a sprue for the wing. So we have two, look at that, two top wings. And one piece bottom wing. Uh, as far as I'm aware, this is not a biplane, so I am guessing the instructions will tell us to use one of them over another... Yes. Ah, yeah, you're using those two. You're using seven and eight, so those two there. Seven and eight, so you don't use those two. Cool. But either way, yep, we've got uh, two top wings, one bottom wing. The wheel well detail consists of just a dent with no wheel in it. I don't know how accurate that is, but uh, yeah, let's hope that doesn't look too bad. And the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that not only is the MS-406 and derivatives not uh, a biplane, it also has only one fuselage, whereas this kit has two. So what I am assuming has happened is that this is the original sprue with the kit. So this will be the MS-406 fuselage, and this is a supplemental one for the bogeyman, for the finish re-engined version you can see there the difference in no shape and that is because this tooling actually dates from 2012 as the ms406 and then in 2013 this part was added to make this the finish variant instead so you essentially have an entire ms406 with extra wing tops and then the extra fuselage that you need for this version new propeller blades new fuselage to have the new nose shape to accommodate the new engine and you've got a difference in spinner radiator alignment as well uh, was this the radiator from a Messerschmitt 109 or, or something like that there was something very German in there uh, and of course it had a machine gun through oh no sorry it's a cannon it's either a cannon or a machine gun it was a, a, a shooty stick through the spinner as well very much a, a German-esque French aircraft if you like but there we go so that's the fuselage we'll be using and again it looks really nice you've got the difference in texture between the stressed skin uh stressed metal skin there and the fabric tail section looking very very smart indeed and then here on the fuselage that we're not using you can actually see that there is some flash that's the first flash i've seen thus far uh, you've got another propeller blade and another propeller blade and then other various components so oh, there's the incredibly messy and not at all nice looking instrument panel some exhausts again stuff that isn't really going to be used for the finished version that will be used here so in terms of uh, value for money i guess you get one and a half planes for the price so if anyone needs a spare fuselage for an ms406 then yeah if you get in my good books maybe i will not charge you too much for it anyway enough of looking at boxes let's actually build the thing before we go into the building of the kit i do just want to cover two points Firstly, this video is part of a series, as I've mentioned, and there should be a link to Ms. Modeler's video right above me now, and there will be another to Fenris's video as well of a wonderful uh, Hobby Boss Devotine D520. Wonderfully done. Their descriptions are down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the lovely things to their videos as well. Maybe next year French February will take the internet by storm. You never know. We can hope. Secondly, this video will include, and already has included, imagery of the swastika. Now, I could have just completely ignored it because, historically speaking, I, it, it's irrelevant. That is, it's there, it, it's a historical fact, but I did just want to mention it. The Finnish Air Force used the swastika as its emblem ever since its inception in 1918. That means it was in place long before Nazi Germany took the same symbol. The imagery in this video is because it's a Finnish aircraft, 
it has in no way any bearing on any views that even the Germans had at the time because it is completely separate. There is no way that I could make a model of a Finnish aircraft without putting a swastika on it unless I choose the later one, which is just a period that doesn't interest me as much. So that is why it is there. If you have a problem with that, complain to Finland in 1918. If I can find the address for the entire nation of Finland in 1918, I'll put that in the description below. Uh, if not, just deal with it. It's history. We are straight into it with some confusing decisions regarding the order of the instructions. It appears parts 1 and 2 are exactly the same, and then it's 3, 5 and 4, but hey, whatever. There is significant flashing around the nose, however that's the only real part of flash on the Morco part of the kit. The actual MS-406 original tooling is a little bit flash heavy. But generally speaking, the stuff of this particular version is actually okay. As is often the case with limited run kits, the instructions are more of a guideline than strict, very clear, concise uh, set of rules. Uh, it gives you the general impression, but there are many moments where you really have to stop and think before gluing parts together. And I know you should anyway, but in most kits from, for example, Airfix, Modern Airfix or uh, Modern Revell, they are pretty much shake and bake, whereas here you actually have to think and definitely dry fit. Plenty of sanding and a few parts don't necessarily squeeze in without a bit of work. But as you can see here, the interior detail is quite nice. Now, uh, the French being the French decided to paint the interior of their aircraft blue, because why not? If you're going to go for any colour than blue, I don't have a, uh, a French interior blue. I don't know if anyone does one. So I used intermediate blue from the USN set. It's a Hataka paint. It's essentially the... Uh, tricolour scheme that you'd see on Corsairs, Hellcats, things like that. It's the middle colour on there and it's quite good. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, it just feels about right. It doesn't feel vivid and uh, I'm not sure how vivid it should be so hey, I went for it. Then there was a bit of dry brushing on the instrument panel just with some silver. There's no decal or anything on there but there is some nice moulded seat belt detail which had also been picked out. And as you can see here, they give you a reasonable impression of the interior so especially with the seat belts picked out, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, then my usual wash technique of this Citadel Basilisk Sanus Grey or whatever you want to call it, uh, just used as a, a general wash over everything, just slapped on, then wiped off particularly on the top so that it kind of gives a shattering effect underneath, but a general wash all round. It just takes the edge off a little bit and makes it look a little less monotonous, as in one tone, monotonous as opposed to boring. And before the fuselage halves are stuck together, the exhausts have to be put in from inside, as you can see there. And there's also a little air intake. Also on this one, I decided to paint uh, my name and the, the year on the inside. So if I ever accidentally cut this in half, I'll go, huh, there's a thing that I once did. We now come to a part in the instructions that caused the kit to sit un touched for oh, a good week or so uh, as quite frankly it's anxiety inducing and very frustrating as i mentioned these are not the clearest instructions so when i see this cut miscellaneous chunk of wing in the instructions well yeah this is this is um not not great le grill what the hell is that <laughs> Not going to lie, so the entire wing section at the bottom does not fit in on this fuselage because of the new engine and oil cooler shape at the front. There isn't any clear way of cutting through this. There's no lines on it. I guessed where it went up to, and it's just a constant lining up against the fuselage, making sure I kind of get it right. But because it's on a quite convex shape, it's not the easiest thing to predict. So the entire thing hacked away, sanded with a file, and the end result is, well, the end result is the wing fits the fuselage. I don't know if I could have done it better. Honestly, hard to tell. But hey, I got the wing on the fuselage and that is ultimately the goal. But certainly not something for an inexperienced modeler to undertake. But once that obstacle had been overcome, the rest of the kit was very easy to put together. The wings go on top, the oil cooler itself is then glued to the bottom, and kind of everything else, it, it, it just becomes a plane. Uh, I will actually mention on the oil cooler, once again, uh, it didn't quite fit because of the fuselage shape, so I've had to sand down the end, that's the tail section of it, uh, just to fit in with the rather curvaceous 
under fuselage, the curvaceous belly that you can see there between the uh, the undercarriage uh, wells, the wheel wells. But once that was done, it really starts to take the shape of a rather pleasant looking plane. On that note then, and as the rest of the construction is very limited, a very brief history on this plane because, well, there isn't much history to it. These aircraft were MS-406 and 410s that were bought via Germany from France. No, hang on, they were French, bought from the Germans. Yeah, you get the idea. And when they were somewhat... Uh, outdated, a program was put in place to try and upgrade them. The Germans also had a load of captured Soviet engines, which were from the Lag-3, and they were placed in the airframe along with the oil cooler from a Messerschmitt 109, and the guns varied depending on what they had available. Only three of them were actually finished by the time the uh, the war ended for Finland, the war against the Soviets. However, more of them were converted and did see use against the Germans in the Lapland War. So there we go. It's essentially a Finnish-French-Soviet-German hybrid, which means it's probably appropriate that the colours are predominantly German. So the blue underneath was RLM-65, a load of that was sold to the Finns during the war, and that's what they started repainting all their aircraft in. Then the yellow is sprayed on, which is RLM-04, so it is again a German yellow. I don't know if that's 100% correct, but uh, it looks about right to me, and well, it is just a yellow. And then on top, I don't have a Finnish olive green, which is really a annoying because I should do because I like it so instead the entire aircraft was painted with RLM 82 so it's kind of a uh, Messerschmitt 262 color but with earlier held blau instead of licked blau it's 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 Finnish it's weird in hindsight I probably would have preferred something a bit darker maybe a bit browner a bit more drab but I think it turned out okay in the end However, we now get to a bit which almost didn't turn out okay. So I chose black. As I mentioned during the unboxing, my impression of Finnish camouflage is that it is an olive green and then it is camoed in black rather than dark green. I don't know any better, but I have other aircraft in this scheme, so that's what I went for. But due to my airbrush not playing ball, I was really struggling to spray it and I actually just bailed out and brush painted the whole thing, which I didn't film because I was angry, but never mind decals then and the entire kit was blasted with some Vallejo gloss varnish just to give it a nice smooth finish and as you'll see the camouflage came out all right. I do think the yellow is a little bit washed out. I would prefer it if it was a bit closer to the RLM04. Uh, I know that I chose the paint and I could have just tried to match it better with the decals but honestly I, I do think it's a bit too washed out. And then Microset, Microsol, usual sort of shindig and we put the decals on. Now there aren't that many and to be fair None of them fell apart. Absolutely none of them. Well, okay, almost none of them. One of the roundels almost fell apart, but I think that was more my fault than anything else. And there are very few of them, just the numbers on the tail, the registration, the roundels, and really that's it. Which certainly makes a change from some of these kits with a ridiculous number of stencils. The only thing that I think wasn't quite right is the actual blue on the markings themselves seems a little bit faded. Like with the yellow, it just feels a bit washed out. I was expecting the blue to be a bit more vivid. I do have spares and I could easily change to others if I wanted, however overall it's okay. Maybe it would have been better to have shown the aircraft in a more battle-worn condition and I think then it would perhaps fit more. Uh, we once again return to the instructions showing you this wonderful diagram of how to install the undercarriage legs but of course that is clearly an MS-406 and not one of these later Morco Morans stroke bogeymans, which provides a good final segue as construction ends for me to actually mention why I've been calling it a bogeyman. Well, one of the translations that I've seen for Morco is bogeyman. And of course, as we know, the best bogeyman out there is John Wick. Oh, actually, one last point. Uh, the resin wheels were the ones that I used because they were much better than these quite awful plastic ones that were quite deformed. And so there we go, this uh, French aircraft with a Soviet engine, Soviet or German guns, uh, a cooler from a BF-109G and just random stuff thrown together to try and prolong the life of this otherwise fantastic French aircraft. And I don't know about you, but I think the lines look rather nice. So all that's left to do is uh, have a look at the end result. Well, here we go. Despite the issues I had wrestling with the instructions, we have this rather lovely looking aircraft. I personally think that the nose of this almost looks better than the MS-406. And I know that may be sacrilege on French February to say that a Soviet engine inside a French aircraft is better, but there's just something very, very smart about the look. 
Ultimately, the development of the MS-406 ended when France were occupied by Germany, so had that not happened, it would not be unreasonable to think it would end up looking something like this. But no, it took the Finns to do it using captured parts, and overall, I am very happy with it. Being a limited run kit, it was not without its difficulties, and there's actually a couple of things that I've deliberately, I say deliberately, I've not put on yet. It should have two gun barrels protruding from, uh, one from each wing, you can kind of see I've put smoke streaks on them, I haven't put the barrels on yet, they're not included, you have to make them, and the pitot tube broke and I replaced it with a bit of wire, yeah, little things like that. Uh, I think the radio wire behind the cockpit is also just too big, it looks a little bit silly, but not stuff that can't be corrected if you really want to. And overall, look at this, a unique looking aircraft. There's not really anything else like it. People familiar with the MS-406 will go, oh, oh, that's a bit weird. And hey, what else do you want? So yes, I give this a solid good morning out of 10. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all of the lovely stuff that the algorithm gods demand. As I mentioned earlier, please check out Ms. Modeler and Fenris models for their French February contributions. And if there are any others that pop up in the meantime, I will try and add them to the description. Let me know what you think. Do you like this aircraft? Do you not like this aircraft? And maybe if you're feeling generous, you could even become a channel member. These people on screen just pay a little contribution each month to help keep me motivated to do dumb, silly videos like this and are very much appreciated. Please join them if you can.